you mentioned that someone could implement the uh, load balancer in user space. Why would somebody want to do that instead of doing it in kernel space? So you, you, it's another great, great question. So uh, there, there are advantages and drawbacks of doing it. So if, if you do everything in the kernel, the advantage is, of course, that you don't have to go to user space, right? You do everything in the kernel. Um, it's all fast. It's all right there. But the kernel has some enormous drawbacks. Uh, for example, you can't do floating point math in the kernel. You have to do only fixed point math. Okay. Um, the registers for doing floating point aren't aren't used in the kernel. So um, if you wanted to do like like load balancing, I was saying, you know, we're doing division, right? We're we're talking about the pr proportion of load that one thread is using across the system. And so like this is this is like a floating point. Like everything is done in percentages and fractions. So. Um, it's it's nice to do it in user space because that's kind of the component that's really complicated, mm -hmm. and um, the complexity of doing it in the kernel. You probably could do it in BPF, um, but but you know you're only running the load balancer like in this in one of the schedulers we have. You only run it once every two seconds. You don't really need it to be in the kernel, right? Um, and you know you can do you can really go crazy. Like balancing load is one thing, but you could look at um, you could look at like if you have asymmetric CPU capacity, like one of them, like the one that I was talking about earlier, the 7950X3D, where you have the vCache and then you have the, the other thing, like all of these things you could just, you can model in whatever way you want. You could do machine learning from user space and make predictions. You could classify like what thread, what, what quality of a thread would maybe suit it better for one domain or the other. <laughs> so, um, sort of the, the core to, to sort of summarize the core algorithm like you probably could do it in user space but it's just very limiting you know it's a very difficult environment to program in oh you mean you could do it in kernel space i, I said yeah i'm not sorry that you could do it in kernel space yeah, yeah. um but but user space is easier yeah thanks yeah, yeah. okay uh, i i'm sure most people have heard the terms user space and kernel space before but we should probably just quickly explain what that is as well along with why there is this issue with like swapping back between them and why that comes with some sort of performance degradation sure so User space is the part of the computer that you're using, like when you're using a computer. Like when you're in a web browser, that's a user space program. When you're when you're using, um, you know, like SSH, that's user space. And the idea with user space is um, every every process has its own virtual address space, right? It has its own kind of virtual fake view of memory, um, and that's uniform for every process in the system. Um, your job is to do something, whatever the program is doing, and that's about it. Um, excuse me, kernel space is the component of the system that manages all of that stuff. So, you know, in reality, um, memory is not virtual, right? Memory is physical. You have some amount of, of RAM on the system and the kernel has to map is the term virtual memory to this physical, this physical memory, this RAM. Um, you, you have something like the kernel, the scheduler, excuse me, where you're, where you're deciding which, which threads, which processes get to run on which cores, you know, this is something that has to kind of be in the core of the system. And so, if you imagine that user space, everything is its own process, its own application. The kernel is like that. The kernel has its own monolithic address space. Every thread in the in the kernel is 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 in the same little sandbox, but that sandbox is like the management of the system. It's it's distributing resources. It's it's multiplexing things on on finite resources, um, and it's it's the privileged component, right? You you wouldn't want one malicious thread to be able to give itself all of the runtime in the scheduler, so. Yeah, I mean that's a very high level description, but hopefully that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, and sorry, you also asked like about the the transition between the two. Yes, yes. So when you go between user space and kernel space, um, that's that's an operation where you're changing address spaces, you're changing privilege levels, all this stuff, right? Like when you're in. So I don't know if, if anybody ever ever heard of these uh, these horrible vulnerabilities called Spectre Meltdown that happened a few <laughs> years ago. Yeah, those are fun. I, I hope they've heard that. about them. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, for taking Meltdown, because that's a pretty easy one to talk about. So that was a bug where, so the kernel memory is is protected, right? Like if you have a user space process, it shouldn't be able to look at the memory of another one. Like that's a secret, right? Like that would be a bug if you were able to read some remote process's memory, which makes sense. Um, and so when you go between user space and kernel space, a lot of things are happening in hardware that change the execution context. Your registers, the, the user space registers are being saved on the stack. Um, you're changing what the instruction pointer to point to somewhere in the kernel. You're loading kernel registers. You're probably going to change to a kernel thread stack as well. You have to copy memory from user space. Um, again, you're changing privilege level. 
So all this stuff, um, that's called trapping into the kernel. That's the term for it. All of this stuff um, happens every time you go back and forth between the two. And um, Linux is a monolithic kernel, right? So like when you trap into the kernel, it, there's a lot of layers to go down before you get to the scheduler, for example. It's a pretty core part of the operating system. Mm -hmm. So um, if you were to say, okay, well, who's going to run on this, this CPU next? I, I don't even know if it'd be possible to do this, but if you imagine before you make that decision, you schedule your user, actually it would be possible. You schedule you, your user space process that's running on this CPU. You schedule it and it goes, okay, who's gonna run next? Uh, these guys, this guy's, okay, we'll run this this person, next, this thread next. And then it traps back into the kernel. It goes back into the scheduler and it says, okay, this is the one to run next. And that's the one that you put on the core. So that's like, that's like way more overhead than if you just look into a, a kernel space map, right? It's, mm -hmm. you're talking like, orders of magnitude more overhead to do it that way. Mm -hmm. um, there actually is a SCEDEC scheduler that um, somebody at Canonical is working on um, that's doing really, really well because he's 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 uh, been able to really push it pretty far. But uh, in practical terms, um, there is there is a lot of cost to doing that. Mm -hmm. But then the issue you have with doing things in kernel space is you can cause serious issues like, because it is a monolithic kernel, things might, you know, really bad code can take down the entire kernel. Yeah. Yeah. Really bad code can. It turns out the code that we thought wasn't bad can also do it, unfortunately. <laughs> um, now, with, within a SCEDEX program, within within a BPF program, theoretically, you're not supposed to be able to take the host down. And if, if that would happen, then it should be it should fail to even be loaded in the first place. But for sure, to your point more broadly, absolutely. It's a big kernel space is like it's a tricky it's a tricky place to be doing programming in. It's good, you know, within reason, it's good to try to push complexity out of the kernel when you can. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, if you look at a lot of the kernel, the kernel algorithms for how it implements stuff, like the heuristics are off, often probably more simple than you would imagine. Like for prefetching IO, I haven't looked at it in a while, but I think it was a static amount that you prefetch. Um, there's no like tracking. I might be wrong about this, but uh, the last time I checked, I think that was what it was. I don't think there's any tracking of like, how much are we reading? Like, oh, we've been reading a lot. Well, like we should prefetch more because we're expecting it to be reading this whole file. Mm -hmm. So all this stuff that you could do with like math and kind of, kind of more complicated reasoning and models about how things work, you really don't see that very often in the kernel. And the scheduler is actually probably the most complex part of the entire kernel in that regard, mm -hmm. like how much it has in the kernel directly. Um, but yeah, in general, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's not a great place to, to be doing that. You said theoretically the BPF program shouldn't be crashing the kernel. I'm I think it's fair to assume that there were some issues along the way where they were crashing the kernel. Yeah, sure. I mean, it it happens. You know, it's especially like if there's a new release and there's some big feature that like some we haven't seen a corner case. It happens. Um, so far, we haven't. I'm gonna knock on wood, but we haven't had any like big issues rolling it out to in, in Meta. Um, and uh, but yeah, you know, we we're, we're working on it. People are finding stuff. The, the community around the project has actually grown a lot in the last few months, uh, which has been really cool. And with more eyes on it, you know, somebody, for example, opened a, a bug today because on the stable release of the kernel, if you try to use um, what's called conflow, uh, control flow integrity, this feature called CFI, which basically makes sure that you're always calling a safe function in the kernel, um, that it would crash the SCEDEX. And it was because some patch set that was never merged to the actual stable kernel, which it probably should have been, um, we, we didn't know that it wasn't merged. And so we just told people, like, yeah, just don't use the stable release because nobody's really using it that, uh, that often anyways. Um, but but yeah yeah absolutely there's i think uh anybody who works in any part of software that tells you that there's never problems is uh, is is being a little bit uh disingenuous <laughs>